Hello, I'm FPX Toy Cat, and I just stumbled across this old video of mine from 2015 where I spoke about the five most pointless items that existed in the game at that time. And I'll save you the question marks in the thumbnail. This was my top five list, and as you can see, when you look at them, it seems ludicrous that these were considered useless because they're all genuinely useful, very useful, I would say, items that exist in Minecraft now. And it wasn't just that the video was wrong, it's just that they've had six years of major updates where they've made, at some point in time, every single one of these items useful and this shows that Minecraft cares about making their old features good which means we can now look at these features see how they changed but also look at other features that have been added and maybe a little bit useless in the preceding uh, five to six years and maybe see what could change in the future so let's do precisely that today I hope you all enjoy this video but let's dive straight into it won't even mention that subscribing is great for you because the fifth most useless item as I considered it at that point in time was the firework this is a firework rocket right here and at that point in time it it was just usable to place it on the ground and that was it. You saw a cool firework explosion, maybe, but if you didn't have one of those, it was just a white trail. However, um, that was in 2015 when it was just fireworks that were fireworks. In uh, 2016 with the 1.11 update, they introduced a really cool feature where if you have an Elytra on and then you uh, activate said firework, you will be able to fly through the sky. It is really, really interesting in my opinion um, that this item was uh, for one point just a firework because it seems so ludicrous now. Now, the only reason you ever craft fireworks in survival is to use with your Elytra, who actually uses them to celebrate, and the only answer is people between 1.4 when it came out and 1.11 when they were actually made useful for flying the Elytra, which itself only came in 1.9 by the way. It's so weird to think of the firework without the Elytra, but it was true, and so yeah, this formerly next to useless item got a real use because of the addition of the wings to the game effectively. Uh, same with the bowl. The bowl, uh, admittedly the bowl was always usable as a way to craft mushroom stew, but mushroom stew was not made a stackable food in 1.8 and so between 1.8 and basically, you know, for, for many years of Minecraft's history, it was a next to useless item because who wants unstackable food when instead you could have something like baked potatoes or cooked pork chops or golden carrots, all of which you could have 64 off in a stack compared to just one lonely bowl of stew. No one wants it and that's who. Uh, however, in the years since then, they've added Minecraft's most... Uh, uh, hunger fulfilling food in just one uh, item, which is rabbit stew, of course. You take a potato, a carrot, a mushroom, and a rabbit, and you get this, the food that will heal the most hunger in a single bite. Obviously, it doesn't stack, so most players don't use it, but there is a genuine use case for it that is still left to the side. Then there is beetroot stew, where obviously if you... Oh, wait, we've got to eat our rabbit stew first. But there's beetroot stew, where if you have a bowl and six beetroots, you can get a decent meal from it, as opposed to having to eat so many beetroot just to go anywhere because these things heal half a, a, a hunger bar each. They're next to useless by themselves, but they're kind of okay in a stew. But the real one that saved the day is the fact that if you get a brown mushroom, so you have to hit a mushroom with a channeling trident, then you have to uh, feed the mushroom any flower, and then you get something called suspicious stew. Suspicious stew is not your dodgy uncle, but instead is actually uh, something you can do uh, where you actually will get a wonderful effect, but you don't know what the effect is until you eat it. And that is a really really fun thing for, you know, fooling your friends, but also it's the only way to get the saturation hunger effect in Minecraft. It's wonderful in my opinion, not as wonderful as what they've done to golden leggings though. So golden leggings were kind of just the show off for all of the armor. Uh, gold armor used to be just a dumb thing you would never want because gold is more enchantable than other types of, uh, you know, tools. However, you don't need enchanted armor if it's only going to last for 30 hits. However, now there is a use case for golden, uh, you know, like obviously golden leggings also a golden helmet or golden boots or golden anything because when piglins spawn they will not care or they, they won't attack you I should say um, if you can prove that you have some gold on you and if you don't have gold on you do you know what happens I'll give you a clue bad things happen that involve crossbows being fired at you wow crossbows you can only really uh, stop yourself from taking damage with <laughs> by the way did you know that when a uh, a piglin has uh, converts to a zombie piglin. He can keep his crossbow. I didn't until just before this video when I found that exact same thing. Very wacky. But yeah, this is the reason gold is useful. To stop piglins getting on you, if you spend time in the nether, you probably wear a piece of gold armor, which is incredible because it's basically unthinkable from before, and yet it is true now. Speaking of this, the dead bush is one of those items, uh, or formerly the shrub and the dead bush, that just... I, I didn't see a single way they could make it useful, and so I've said many times 
of four. Deadbush is the best currency because you can only silk touch it. it. You can never grow any more of them. They exist in the world in a certain number and then never again. Again, great for currency. However, now they do have a secondary use besides currency and being one of the uglier blocks. Because when you punch dead bushes, you almost always get sticks. You get zero to two in case you're curious. So one stick, two sticks, two sticks, one stick, two sticks. As you can see, from punching just a small patch of dead bushes, I now have 11 sticks, which in the early game is very useful, and in the early game in a desert can be incredibly useful. Wow, they made the dead bush useful too, and that's why the golden hoe, is, which was formerly the most useless item in Minecraft, has been made so much more useful by, okay, I'm going to level with you right here. Um, I'm, I'm just going to say it. Uh, by the way, look at that. I got the hunger effect very temporarily. How? Oh, sorry, the uh, saturation effect, which uh, means I'll heal slightly faster. Anyway, so as you can see, the last item here, the golden hoe, is so useful, except still. You, you still, okay, so it used to be a fun running joke that you'd never waste your diamonds on a hoe. And obviously, yeah, I, I, there's a secondary uh, point about the nature of, uh, you know, like uh, using... Uh, you know, money is a, a, a means to acquire uh, status and human beings in there. However, uh, you know, obviously, diamond hoes were seen as dumb because they did exactly the same job as any other hoe. And it was unthinkable that if there ever was going to be a tier above diamonds, that you would use that for hoes too. However, people genuinely will have diamonds or, uh, you know, uh, neverites in their hoe, and maybe every now and then a gold one, because now hoes are not just the way you make farmland, but also they're the way to break a ton of blocks. The mushroom block, Best broken with a hoe. You might want to put silk touch on it, though. Uh, leafs, for example. Best broken with a hoe. Wow, look at the speed I did that with. Uh, sponges. Another weird Minecraft item that was useless when first added and then eventually got its use back. Best broken with a hoe. The hoe is the go-to tool for so many weird, I'll admit, tools like uh, never warp blocks. And I'll give you the full list right now because it's very confusing. Um, but yet, the fact is, they are genuinely used in that way. And so, in this little retrospect, I wanted to prove how Minecraft in just six years, which six years is both a long time and a short time, depending on how you want to see things. Uh, you know, six times is six years is a long time to you know spend with a singular hoe, but also it's a very short time to be playing Minecraft. You know, another lesson about uh, wasting your valuable resources and hoes there. But the other interesting thing here is the fact that clearly, if uh, they put this much effort into making these formerly useless items useful, they're going to do so again, right? I mean, even when we look at items which are designed to be useless, like rotten flesh or string or gunpowder. Gunpowder became useful for fireworks. Rotten flesh um, became a way to get the hunger effect and to do all sorts of weird things. String is useful for all sorts of weird building tips. And the list goes on, right? That even useless items get a tiny uh, bit of use. And so what are the equivalent items today? And I could make a trillion videos talking about it. But the ones I see most clearly, because rabbit hide is being fixed in 1.18, you'll be able to make bundles with it as opposed to just making leather, which seems like not a very good trade at all. Um, but the ones that still stand out to me beyond that are things like, okay, why does horse armor exist in any tier other than diamond and leather? Leather you can dye it, diamond is the best, gold is somehow better than iron for reasons I've never been able to discern. Why does iron horse armor even need to exist? It doesn't. If you find it before gold or diamond, you'd keep it then. Otherwise, it's just worse. So why do we have objectively worse horse armor? Why can't you enchant them and maybe get different enchantments for each one? Why can't they have different performance characteristics or something? I don't know. Maybe we just don't consider horses that much. Next up, we've got the spyglass, which as you can see, just zooms in. It doesn't let you see. Again, I feel like the best thing to do with it, the smart thing to do would be that you could increase your render distance. But nope, you can just look into the fog of the void if you have low render distance. So um, yeah, maybe this is solved over time because people get better performing PCs and Realms eventually gets good enough that you can see beyond, you know, like it's a pretty small distance I'm asking to see right here. So maybe the spyglass improves over time. Maybe it becomes enchantable, so you can see people who have the spectral effects, or maybe invisibility effects. Because a reminder, invisibility does exist in Minecraft, and you can even put invisibility on an arrow if you want to. This is one of the dumbest things that I still, I just, I don't quite understand it. It takes a lot of effort to make uh, tipped arrows, and they give you such tiny effects. I mean, maybe if you want to be quirky and shoot one at your cat, okay, well... I'm going to pick that one back up, aren't I? If you want to be quirky and shoot it at your cat and then make your cat go invisible slightly, I mean, maybe that's funny. Maybe that's worthwhile. Can you tell me 
Um, it's not even truly invisible. You can see the sparkles where the cat's clearly meant to be. Um, what about jump boost arrows? When is there ever an opponent, a friendly, an anything that you think to yourself, yeah, I want to give it 11 seconds of jump boost. I mean, again, if you fire it at yourself, it kind of works, but it takes longer than it does just to drink a potion, and it lasts for 11 seconds. Who needs a jump boost arrow for 11 seconds? I can think of zero cases, or basically zero cases. Um, then, there, of course, there's slow falling, too. I mean, again, maybe if your friend is in midair and he's dying, or maybe if you're like, okay, I just want to get a very brief bout of slow falling so I can jump over something, but then I like falling naturally. Again, it's it's very, very hard to justify tipped arrows. It's very hard to justify the fletching table just being a village block. Obviously, we know this is being fixed at some point, but we don't know when. And so Minecraft, as much as it's getting good at you know giving use, uh, use more uses to old items, even the useless items, I feel like we're still adding next to useless items to the game. Um, and maybe that is a good thing because again, you can you can choose to stock up on those items or not I better put on my my gold helmet except I've already attacked him. So I guess he has to die anyway But um, yeah, I, I think that Minecraft has this uh, thing about usability that maybe they should have a consistent policy on like is it uh, are useless items necessary in Minecraft are useless mobs necessary in Minecraft or maybe just maybe if we go the other way about this you could say that those things aren't necessary in the slightest Let's drink, eat my rabbit stew, by the way. Wow, look how cool that is. Um, but um, maybe, just maybe, uh, there should be a more consistent thing, and everything should have its own purpose, and that purpose can be expanded on, but it shouldn't be added now. Things like the goat horn or the whatever else, those things shouldn't be added with the later intent of like, yeah, we'll make them useful then. Because just like gold tools taking genuine years to have any viability, just like the, the firework rocket having years of just being a distraction, or the bowl, or the dead bush. I think um, it'd be better if they came up with these uses on the spot, or they didn't add them if they were next to useless. But what do you think, Internet? Do you have the opposite opinion where you'd actually prefer more useless things? Like, oh, wouldn't it be cute if we had more useless mobs that one day got useful? So you could have a whole ton of, you know, let's pick a dumb mob, like grizzly bears in your base that one day would be useful for farming honey or something. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments down below. For now, I hope you all enjoyed this little retro throwback Creative World style video. I, uh, I've actually been considering releasing the Creative World as like a, a thing that people uh, can check out and see, because obviously I tied all of my Creative Worlds together into one thing. Let me know if you'd like that, maybe a tour of this world, like with the, uh, you know, the survival world. Or let me know if that's the worst idea you've ever heard, because I hope you all enjoyed this video, and I'll see you all in the next one. Goodbye.